2022 has been the year of ultra wide angle APS-C mirrorless lenses. Whereas two years ago, you would have been hard pressed to find a single or two good ultra wide angle lenses for the platform. Today, you have at least half a dozen very good options, which is why when Tokina reached out to me, stating that they were releasing this 11 to 18 millimeter f2.8, I was excited, but I also thought to myself, why didn't they release this thing sooner? So let's take a closer look at this new lens in this video. I don't have a retail box or any paperwork for this lens. All I have is the lens itself, a couple of plastic lens covers and a plastic lens hood. The texture on this lens hood is a little strange. It's smooth plastic on the inside, but the outside is a bit like fine sandpaper, but who cares? The lens itself feels great. It's plastic, but feels like a very good plastic. Tolerances are tight. It's nicely weighted at 336 grams and very very compact for being an f2.8 ultra wide zoom. In terms of size, it's about the same length as the Sigma 30 millimeter with a little bit more width. Starting at the rear, there is a metal mount with electronic connections. This is an auto focusing lens and there is even a mini USB port here for later firmware updates. No weather sealing though. Nice little Tokina logo here and a very smooth, very nice zoom ring that moves from 11 millimeters to 18 millimeters. It's light to rotate, but very smooth and well done. As you rotate the zoom, the front of the lens barrel does extend just about a centimeter or so. The grip is rubberized and again, it just feels well done. Up next is the focus ring, which is nice and grippy electronic, so it rotates infinitely in either direction. Right above it, you have the model, which is ATX-M and the lens spec. On the other side, there are minimum focusing distances, which are great at 0.19 meters or just over half a foot. Around the front, there is a nice sized convex front lens element with no other writing or information here, simple and clean. The good news is that the front filter thread is 67 millimeters, so if you do use filters, you'll be happy. Inside, there is a nine rounded blade diaphragm and 13 elements in 11 groups. On the camera, it looks great. It's a nice and compact ultra wide zoom lens and it feels right at home. It's noticeably smaller than the Tamron 11 to 20 millimeter, which I think is its most direct competitor. All right, so, so far this lens is doing very well. The biggest problem with it though, is that it has very stiff competition in the form of that Tamron 11 to 20 millimeter, which does have some form of minimal weather sealing, which for some of you is going to be a big deal. So just stick with the Tamron, but let's see how this new Tokina performs. And so what I'm going to do is show you some samples taken with my Sony a6100 straight out of the camera, no editing, no post-processing, no corrections. Well, corrections were turned on in the camera, but I didn't mess with any of these images apart from just uploading them and timing them to the beat. Ready, set, go. Okay, so what can I say? All of those images that I just showed you were taken wide open with this lens at f2.8 and in the center of the frame in every single image that I zoomed in and looked at, it was nice and tack sharp. Indeed, center sharpness is excellent in almost every single photo. Corner and edge sharpness is good. It's not tack sharp, but good enough to the point where I don't notice any problems. The good news continues with distortions as vignetting is very minimal with corrections on, as is barrel distortion and pincushion distortion depending on the focal length, moving from barrel distortion on the wide end to pincushion as you zoom into 18 millimeter. 
Even chromatic aberration is well controlled. It's certainly there in bright contrasty situations, but it's about on par with other ultra wide angle lenses in this price point and slightly above. Sometimes there is some green outlining, but most of the time there is some purple, but again, not a massive issue at all. Flare control is excellent. There is flare, but it doesn't overtake the entire frame. It's evident that Tokina paid some attention to their coatings to make flare performance pretty solid. Bokeh is also nice and smooth, no glaring issues or busy looking problems to report back. Really the only negative that I have in terms of optics for this lens is that it has some noticeable focus breathing. So for videos where you are racking focus from one extreme to another, you'll see the shift in field of view. But most lenses, apart from some of the new Sony ultra wides that are video focused, have this problem too. So if I had to summarize this lens up until this point, it's that it's good enough. It's not perfect, but there's nothing really blatantly obviously wrong with this lens either in terms of optics or build or anything. It's a good all around lens. Center sharpness is excellent. Corner sharpness, edge sharpness is good enough. And I think if you're going to be using this lens for its intended purpose, which is casual video work, casual photography for uploading to YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or MySpace, I don't know, then you will be perfectly fine and happy with the performance that you're getting out of this lens. The autofocus performance is also excellent. It's not blazing fast, such as some of the new native Sony lenses, but it's also not slow like lenses of old either. It's silent, it's accurate, again, it's good enough. So all of this comes down to price because with price, you can negate a whole list of wrongs. And so this lens is, I think, very well priced. It comes in on sale right now for $599 US. So 600 bucks. If you were to look back when the Tamron, the 11 to 20 came out, that retail price was $829. So that means this lens is a whopping $230 cheaper than the Tamron. And I think that's an amazing value. The problem is the Tamron lens, at least as of today's date, is on sale for $649. And so when there is a $50 price difference between two great lenses, it makes the choice a little bit more difficult. Is the weather sealing and the slightly better optical performance worth going for the Tamron? Most would probably say yes, but if we are being fair in comparing both of these lenses at MSRP, there are situations in which I think picking up the Tokina over the Tamron certainly makes sense. As for me, the Sony 11mm f1.8 prime lens has really stolen my heart. I'm using it to record this video right now, and I think that it does everything ultra wide really exceptionally well. But you guys know that I am a big fan of primes and fast primes, so that comes as no surprise. I do think that for most people, the versatility of having a zoom range on an ultra wide, such as this 11 to 18, makes a whole lot more practical sense because you can use this for more than just a single focal length. You can use this easily for vlogging, for taking landscape photos, for real estate photography, especially if you pair it with something like the Sony ZV-E10, which has some built-in electronic stabilization that will crop in to get that stabilized look. So you want a wider image that you can crop in and still have decent separation from you like two feet away or three feet away. It's a well-built, good performing lens coming from Japan. It's just a shame that they didn't release this lens two years ago because they would have sold tens of thousands of them. But I guess in the end, it's better late than never. So that is it for my review of the new Tokina 11 to 18 f 2.8. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned something from it. Special thank you goes out to Tokina for sending this lens out to me for review. I am genuinely excited to see that you guys are back. Uh, it's been a while since I've held a Tokina lens and I don't think I've ever tested one on a Sony APS-C camera. So please continue doing what you are doing and give us more lenses for APS-C. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always, thank you so much for all of your likes, all of your comments and your support. Stay tuned for more. Have a great day. Bye-bye.